So mine Nano v version 2 arrived finally. It took about two months but it's here now. Let's have a play with it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is peel this bloody screen off and then put it behind this plate. I'll have to loosen these screws off. So now I can actually peel it off because it makes it a bit harder to see. But you have to actually get the thing lifted off first. Here we go. I'm going to peel it off now. Here we go. Makes it a lot easier to see. What's also there to protect it but it's a bit of a annoying so they put it behind the panel. Never mind. Here we go. That looks much nicer. Let's put this back down again. So yes, yeah, so we have a play with this. I've got some antennas here. I'm going to have a little play with those. I already, already have a bit of play with them. But I thought I'd show you what I found because it's very interesting. And it's a bit of an example of the risks you take when you're buying things from China. Okay. So, to start off with, well, this isn't going to be like a tutorial on this thing. Unfortunately, my lights are drowning this out a little bit. You can see my lights there. Let's just um, try and dim this down a bit. Hold on. Make it a bit more subdued. So there's the screen. Now this is the reflection port and this is like S11 port and SES21 port for the through measurements, which is why it's got an arrow here pointing inwards so that you can't see it very well. Anyway, I probably will put it in a better case or something at some point. There'll be links down below for this little VNA thing. I highly recommend you check them out. Go down there and go and buy one right now. Go do it. What I'm going to show you is, well, I've, I've already gone through, done a calibration on it, so you can go in here and you've got various options in the menus. So I'm trying to see, you've got a cal option here, calibrate, and I've already done an open, short, and a load calibration. I've already done those. I haven't done a through or anything like that. So those are done. And so it's basically ready to use, it's calibrated at this point here. So this actually comes with some calibrators. All right, so we've got, that one there's an open, there's no pin inside it. This one's a short because it's solid inside. You can just see a solid disc in there. And this one here is the load. It's got a little 50 ohm resistor inside here somewhere, obviously, in the back there. So those are the calibration things which come with it. 60 US, I think it was. So it's pretty cheap, but it's a really handy tool to have, you know. If you want to have a VNA, then why not? You know, even if you're just doing basic stuff or just cross-checking things, it's great for that. I mean, I've only just got it, obviously, but, you know, it's battery powered, but I'm charging up as well right now, so I've got a cable on it. So I've already done the calibrations. So I'm going to show you some antennas. Stimulus, there we go. If you look for stimulus to get the spans and stuff set up on it, all right? So I'm going to do a start of 400. I'm not quite sure what I'm right now. I should actually have a look. Start of 400. Stop at one gigahertz, all right? So that's not too bad. That gives a reasonable looking range. So these antennas here, I've got three of these little ones. These are all sold as 868 megahertz antennas. So we'll have a look and see how consistent these are. Like I said, I've already done a calibration, so I should just be able to screw this on the end. Obviously, it's not going to be talked up as the fire, so it's going to affect it. And that's what we get. Now, moving in, you know, away. From objects and stuff like that, it does change it. I put my hand near it, it does shift it off a bit and that sort of stuff. If I lay it down, you probably can't see too well, but it does shift it around if I put it off the edge of the desk. But if I put the cursor down to you know, kind of where it's sitting naturally, get my hand back away, that's pretty close. About there, all right. Um, and the marker is at 805 megahertz. See that? So, 808 is it? Something like that, anyway. So that's not 868, that's off by 60 megahertz, which is quite a bit. Okay, um, so, okay, let's look at the next one. Maybe doing these things, spin the nut, not the antenna. You're going to wear the socket out, as you wear out the centre pin. Alright, another antenna. This one's looking slightly higher in frequency. go, it's about 820. Lay it down so it's off the edge of the desk, it goes a bit higher again. About there. So that's 826. So 26 mega well 20 megahertz higher than the other antenna. I forgot which one's which now. Mm, maybe it's this one. I'll try this one. Off the edge of the desk and that's similar to the last one. Yeah similar to the last one. So, 
they're definitely not 868 they're more like 810 820 megahertz interesting so okay next antenna this one's also supposed to be an 868 megahertz this is a larger one this one does end up spinning the whole antenna unfortunately all right so let's have this off the edge of the desk look at the state of that there's no dip there at all this is nowhere near that frequency uh, okay, well let's just um, make the stop frequency 3 gigahertz. Let's go right to the top and see what we get. Very different. Look at that. That's closer to 3 gigahertz, not 68 megahertz. So, if I make the start frequency 2 gigahertz, that will narrow it down quite a bit. Well, look at that, it's right over here. Let's bring the cursor over. So you can see on the Smith chart it's also getting better. Let's think of right in that dip there. Once my hand's not near it, it's a bit different. Okay, that's 2140 megahertz. That's a 2.1 gigahertz antenna, not an 868. That was nice of them, wasn't it? To give me a completely wrong antenna. So, 2 gigahertz antenna. I'm happy without that. Okay, next one. Uh, I've got another one which looks exactly the same. This one looks identical, but it's actually marked as 433. Um, and if I compare it to this antenna here, put them side by side, you can see they're basically identical. They look almost the same. There are some slight differences there, but they look almost identical. right? So they're not exactly the same antenna, but they look very similar. So this is a 433. We'll show this one on. And we'll find out if it is actually a 433. And that's way down. No, those are just those are resonance bumps. So no, let's uh, put a stop. At, well, it's supposed to be four three three. So shove four hundred megahertz in there. And there we go. You got a big dip over there. So okay, let's reduce this range a bit. Stop one gigahertz. Right. So there's a dip there. Let's bring this round to the dip. Get my hand away. Not too far. Out there, that's 442 megahertz. So, if I like angle this away from everything, I'll probably change things too. There you go. So, 442 megahertz, or 450 or so, maybe sort of around that region. So, that changes things a bit, doesn't it? So, this one's actually about right. This one's correct, basically. Interesting. Right, now we've got the big one here. Let's see what this one's like. Stand this one up, because I can't. And this is supposed to be an 868 as well. And let's bring the cursor over where the dip is. Get my hand away. And that's 838 megahertz or so, maybe slightly higher. A 44 megahertz. So this one is basically an A68 as well. Basically, obviously ground planes affect it. If I'm touching a ground plane, it changes things a little bit and stuff like that. So you know, being near it, it changes it. You know, quite a bit. But this one, I can, I can believe is probably right too. So very interesting. So this is the sort of reason I wanted to get this because I wanted to check all these antennas out and getting. And see what they actually are, because you don't actually know. Um, you know, you can't really trust what they say. So, bit of a warning for you, isn't it? So, I recommend if you've got 60 bucks or something, pick one of these things up. If you've got antennas you use for, you know, doing anything like like I do here, playing around with things, get one of these. Highly recommend it, because even for just doing this basic testing of antennas to find out what the resonant frequency is, invaluable. So, I have a link down below in the description for this thing. Make sure you go and check that out if you're interested in getting one of these. Um, it'd be one of my affiliate links, obviously. You know, so I'll get a bit of a commission for anything you buy from that site when you go to the link. So go and make sure you go and do that. Check those out. Check those links out below. And I highly recommend you get one of these. I'm actually really impressed by it. So especially for the money. The guy that designed this thing deserves a lot of recognition. Um, I think this is a clone of the original. 
but um, I think it all uses the original firmware and stuff like that. So, because I think it was open source and then somebody else started making them, but not I don't know. I just some kind of thing there. Look, it's on the EV blog anyway. Awesome piece of gear. Highly recommended. Amazing for the money. Brilliant job.